Hey there, everybody, and welcome back to Black Arrow Gaming. I am Bob, and we're back for the third in another set of three Age of Wonders episodes. And as you can see, uh, I did some terraforming off camera. I kind of figured there's, I, I figured you guys wouldn't really mind because I'm just like clicking around painting the map. But as you can see, uh, there was a lot to do. My mana is now down to 455, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click next turn so that we can start cycling through. But oh, that guy wants to move. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I got Nippic here, had, uh, let's see, yeah, it was Nippic, was an orc city that needed a whole bunch. Uh, what else do we have? I think Loxmin, yeah, that Draconian city there. Uh, this new Draconian vassal way up here, there's a lot of underground vassals. And then above ground, I think there was four. I got the uh, Naga, their borders grew from that building. I forgot, I missed a spot there. Um, but yeah, more wetlands for the Naga. Uh, these dwarves out here, I actually thought were tigrins, so I swept at all the barons, but it doesn't really hurt them. The wetlands just slow them down, so, um, I was just, just like, yeah, whatever, we'll let it go. Um, and then there was just a couple other cities, like, I think there's a human city here that needed some along the edges. And then there's, like, one more somewhere, I don't remember even where it was. I guess this, that human city needs it too, I missed those. So yeah, just little bits of uh, little bits of land everywhere uh, that are being terraformed. Uh, we do have a few comments uh, remaining to talk about. Um, so we talked a little bit about uh, from Impregnable how smoke screen could be handy for the ward I th for the rogue. I, I think that was where I kind of left off with the comments. Um, Impregnable also recommended getting glyphs of warding for the vassals on the front line here. Um, which I think is a good idea, just in case anything comes this way, and it'll also soften up targets for uh, clearing, for being cleared, uh, if I need to do that. Um, I may do that soon, although there was still some summons I kind of think I wanted first. But another idea that Impregnable had was actually to su also summon like a horde of wisps uh, out here on these frontline cities, and then just bull rush an army of wisps to the west and uh, clear a whole bunch of area off the map, fill it in. So I think that might be a good idea. That may be worth doing. Um, so I may get to that soon. I'm not sure if I'll do that before or after glyphs or what else I want in between now and then. Um, also from Impregnable, great advice, I think, uh, was to be careful when using my leader against the Dreadnought because the Dreadnought has a tendency to, if you, so like I've got my leader here, right? If the Dreadnought kills a hero, whatever, I can get him back with True Resurrect, but not your leader because you can't cast spells if your leader dies. And sometimes on defense, if you go up against a horde of Juggernauts, all of them will on their very first move fire mortars directly at your leader. Um, usually a hero, if they can hit one and your leader, <coughs> excuse me. I must be having allergy problems or something um the fire at your leader if they can and that can very quickly kill a squishy sorcerer so um yeah i definitely need to be on the lookout for that if i can avoid my leader getting murdered by mortar fire that would definitely be preferable um the nice thing about my leader in particular is that i am going for one thing i've got fire immunity on a frostling which is pretty cool um, but she will also have resurgence, <coughs> excuse me, so that will help, but, uh, yeah, something to watch out for in, in any case, and I think that might be it, except for the last bit of advice from Impregnable this week, uh, was for Morak Soul Underground, what to do with that city, so I haven't talked about this a lot in the past few episodes, but if we pop back underground to Morak Soul, which is this dwarf city down here near Tol Tor Torloden. I keep getting <coughs> keep getting those mixed up. Um, yeah, it's this one right here. So they got the enchanted tree and they got the magic library. Those both benefit forge priests. So what the idea was was to keep building firstborns and mix them in with forge priests who can heal them and give them fire buffs and stuff. Um, with Guardian Flame. 
which I think is a great idea. The forge, the, the firstborn could be a tanky front line with the forge priest in the back causing extra trouble um, and doing a little bit of magic damage, I think, with the bonus from the magic library. So uh, doing a little bit of shock damage. So I think that's what the magic library does anyway, right? Magic Academy? No, uh, it just buffs their range damage, presumably whatever channel they already do and gives them a resistance. So never mind. Was wrong about that, but would still be very handy to have. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and keep that in mind. Okay, now these guys I think could probably handle two Wraith Kings. Um, I'm gonna manual combat this. Uh, it'll be tough um, because I'm used to, well, no, they actually do very little poison damage. Most of it's physical. So I think the Phantasm Warrior is still, could still tank quite a bit of this. I'm actually going to put him in a position... Yeah, I'll just lure them in with him. And uh, let the fairies kind of wreck them. Because the fairies will do a lot of damage to those guys. Alright. Go after that guy, please. Thank you. Yeah, this should be pretty easy. gonna have you fly here and just charge them and you can stay on defense and pressure that guy or just keep him from blanking the fairies entirely what kind of damage yeah oh well if you crit then that's gonna really simplify things great well done now I still don't know if I could squeeze through there because something is still spawning units over there And there might be more by the time I get through, but uh, let's see. All right, well, we are here at the next turn. I'm gonna do a quick save and probably we'll still try to move forward. I've been trying to get to that dang treasure on the water for a while now and I can't get over there. Um, I will be having more units coming underground here before long to bring in some backup, including an Archangel. So these guys aren't really gonna be alone. Um, all right, got a uh, convert rod on her for now, which is fine. This person's inventory is still completely clogged up, which not much I'm kidding to really do about that. Uh, I have to wait for a little while. For now though, I'm gonna leave her in her melee set of gear and uh, we're gonna get aggressive against the necromancer here. We still have no idea. I still have no idea where Frodo is. I'm hoping that once I move into range of his capital, I can see a bit more and get an idea. Well, that's pretty lightly defended considering what I'm bringing. So this should be fun. Oh yeah, this should be a walk in the park. I don't even think I needed this much stuff, although I might against the Dreadnought. Their stuff scares me a lot more. Uh, we can cast the Eldritch Horror spell later. In the meantime, let's check out the items. Uh, light protection, resistance, forest concealment. Probably better than the 12 regen. Yeah. Yeah, let's go ahead and throw that on. I think I can probably sell this. I don't think that's a very good item. Okay. What else? Oh good, my uh, my resurgence stuff is here just in time, which gives 100% fire protection. That is... You know what? I just had an idea for what I should do next then. Because now I've effectively got 240% fire protection. I don't need that on her. So, uh, how much extra movement do you have? Do you guys both have enough to swap some items between the two of you? Yes, you do. Okay. Come down here, and then you two can just trade some things. So, uh, with that resurgence, I don't need these. So I can drop those. 
and 60%. Well, it's still giving me spirit resistance, though, which I like. But I can also get that with... Can sorcerers get strong will? They can. What boots? You got the shock resistant boots. 40% shock protection, which is giving you exactly 100, and I kind of like that. Um, in any case, what I'm thinking here is I'm going to actually drop the Quiver of Mortality because I don't need that fire shield on my leader anymore. So we'll just go all in on this whole the druid's a melee fighter now. Swap that for this shield. Use her, this character, more as a ranged fighter. Um, the Seeker Hood would be handy, but I don't think... I don't really know for sure what to do here. I'm way overkill on the fire, but you know what? I might not worry about that. How's the spirit? You know, I'm actually okay with this. I know there's a little overkill on the fire there, but... And I'm also sort of beginning to wonder if maybe I should keep the shield on her. No, the projectile resistance is really handy. I actually do like that. Although, do I have projectile resistance already? I was feeling... I think the sorcerer can get, like, a projectile reflection? Yeah, I have projectile reflection. But projectile resistance would go a long way towards defending against those dreadnoughts. So yeah, I want that on her. Um, shield items are mostly pretty good for everybody. I think I can sell this fire shield. I don't think I need this anymore. That frees up a spot. And then you, I think I'm actually going to leave with everything that you had. Uh... I'll give the Seeker Helmet to... What is my... You know what, what does her helmet do? It's just the resistance and the vision range. The Seeker Helmet might be more useful during a battle. So if I feel like my hero will need to shoot at a lot of stuff. So maybe I will drop that. Close that out. In fact... Take the fairy fire, too. Drop all that. You can stick with your... You can keep the longbow. So you might need a range attack at some point. Uh, but... We're mostly melee now. And then I can... Put the fairy fire wand here as a replacement for that magic wand, which is way, way better. Um, I will give... And I'll put the seeker hood there. But I will let her keep this, just so you have a magic attack. Might be handy at some point, who knows. But uh, I think I like this setup better now, especially having projectile reflection on Artica. That's, that's huge, going up against a Dreadnought. All right, split back into your respective armies, and those guys are all good. Again, I don't need to do anything with that right now. Goblin Settler is ready to go already. That was one turn. They must have auto-completed production or something. All right, well, go back to uh, your merchandise. That's fine. And you, I'm just going to auto-path you to go all the way up to, like, somewhere up here. It's fine. I'll figure that out later. Okay, she just got Jack's gift, which is a good item for her with regrowth. And Burrow of Fire is done here. Let's keep upgrading for more dragons. Um, probably you'll just get everything down here, I think. Burrow of Gold. Nah, I think we'll. I'll, I'll go for the Fire Dragons first just because they could come in helpful against the Juggernaut. 
It's gonna take those Dragon Cities forever to upgrade, though. They have no production bonuses. All right. Jerome is... Okay, Jerome needs the Observatory, and then it will have uh, Grand Palace after that. Good, good, good. Um, as for this Lost Library, this is the kind of situation where I think I want some of those apprentices in here with me. So we'll kind of split half and half. Closely matched, huh? Some evangelists in here. The firstborn can't be mind controlled, but these guys can, so I'll have to keep an eye out for that. Um, let's just go ahead and engage them. And firstborn all go up front. Actually, this would have probably been a better battle for just the firstborn to handle by themselves. But that's okay. Committed to it now, so. Uh, why don't you go introduce yourself to that reanimator? And you guys all hang kind of back. Maybe about three spaces so the. so that these guys can't easily reach them. This isn't looking promising for them. You guys all have killing momentum, right? Everybody in here does. Because that's kind of important right now. Yep. Everybody's got it. All right, so I'm gonna move these guys up to here so I can get a couple shots off on him. Unfortunately, no stun. I'm gonna do pretty much the same with every single one of these guys in the back. Try to get a cheap stun on somebody. There we go. And can you reach? Now yeah, I guess I'll go for these guys. Okay, maybe I can trigger killing momentum. There we go, cool. Okay. Hello there. need invigorate right now. Well, that was easy. Yay, 60 research. Uh, there's another treasure site up there. I may as well go grab. And the rest of them, I think I'll split up kind of like this. So we've got... Army of Firstborns, half Firstborns, half Tiger and Apprentices, I kind of like that. These guys will be able to do some damage. And I might actually kind of keep them sort of together. Alright, looking good down there. Uh, more apprentices here. We're going to put them on camp until that's full. Hospital is done. And this one is just the temple and the great temple. And then my capital will finally have a grand palace. It would be nice to be able to live into a grand palace. I control like half the world, but I don't live in a grand palace. Sorcerer's Conflux is done. The Mana Vault, I guess we can always use. It gives me something to dump mana into, and then after that, I think this city goes on permanent produce merch. I do like keeping bumping up that mana capacity, though. We're at closing in on 4,000. That's a lot of mana. Okay, I do not want the Giants to join me. You guys can just stay vassals for forever. That's fine. 
The orcs, on the other hand, let's see, where are you guys at? Are you in any danger? I don't think these guys are. I think I've... Yeah, with those dragons gone, these guys are safe, so I can absorb them. Also, uh, they need salt. A lot of orcs underground. Sure, join my empire. Now start building things. Beginning with a storehouse and then a builder's hall. And we'll run down the usual gamut there. This one probably could join soon. Yeah, two turns away on them. And the dragon, these dragons over here can join me. So this is good news. Uh, yes, I think it's time for you to join me. And... We'll get started right away on all of your upgrades. Uh, we'll begin with the Burrow of Gold over here, because that's the only one I don't have in the other Dragon City. And the Incubation Chamber. How's Zari doing here? Uh, can dig one more. You want to split the unit that's actually doing the tunneling, because they burn through a bit more of their movement. Um, and then now that that's done, we'll swap back onto our flying mount and let's see, I need to get this builder. Yeah, this builder needs to get up in there because he needs to dig out all those walls, make the dragons happier. Okay. Let's just kill everything in the general vicinity. That sounds like fun. Uh, no mercy. Let's take XP. I love being able to just auto everything. Okay, good. You guys can all move together and get the trading post too. This will be another spot for another city. Um, maybe I'll drop a fort there with this guy on my way through and uh, add another goblin to the mix. Why not? Yeah, let's just get another goblin going up there. Goblin settler. And we'll just spam goblin settlers underground. My economy is going to be absurdly powerful later in the game. Um, this thing is still needs to stop here. I'll probably build the fort with this builder on his way through. But this guy, uh, I need to decide where this fort's actually going to go. So, it's just, just kind of like a very open spot. I don't think it really matters. There's, It's pretty much just going to be a vassal that gets released and reincorporated. I'll probably put it close to the, uh, to the Lost City, I think. So, like, here seems pretty good. So, yeah, let's do that and let's build the fortress right there okay and then this guy can carry on and I'm gonna put a fort right there you guys can get one more auto in with anyone who has enough movement I would say the Kathana Guardian should be good we'll auto Blade of Chilling Frost. We'll sell that for gold. That's only two frost damage. Alright. Well done, Zari. That army continues to just... This is probably my most powerful army. My Sorcerer's Army is very good, but I kind of think Zari's is the best I've got. I mean, this is just awesome. All right, you got your orders. Suggest you follow them. Sorry, upgraded. Somewhere in the middle of those three battles. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Uh, we're going to probably save some points. It's more of a melee fighter now, right? So I think more defense is always good. 
She's kind of low on the resistance side of things. I'm gonna bump, bump that up a little bit. Add to resistance, add to her defense. She doesn't really need healing aura because of all the healing units that are with her. Um, yeah, we'll just make her tankier. All right, elves need to let me know when they're ready to talk because they're a vassal now. Sweet, this tiny little city here just pulled in 204 gold for me. Can't complain about that, that's pretty nice. All right, this city is getting very close to a grand palace. This city is also getting extremely close to a grand palace. Although it really should probably, oh wait, no, they need the shrine first. They got slowed down for a few turns on account of a dragon, bone dragon incident. Deep sea trench is done here. Treacherous cliffs is being worked on. Um, I don't know what leads to what in this city. Let's just uh, get the Anemone Oasis, why not? And we'll see what's available after the Treacherous Cliffs are done building. All I really care about is getting the dang um, Lords of the Deep, so... Hospital is next, that's fine. Uh, the city still got a little ways to go there. Speaking of this city... I think it's time we uh, paid a visit to the ziggurat here and maybe made growing this city's borders a bigger priority. Yeah, we need that city's borders or this one. I don't care who grows first, but uh, somebody needs that uh, ziggurat. And the sooner this one can get it, the better probably. So um, I'm going to cancel that and we'll go for the laboratory. Hopefully we can build... Ah, uh, we won't be able to build the... Well, we might be able to build the Master's Guild in one turn if I'm fast. Because I could clear this and then come down here and clear... Ah, oh, dang. Well, on the next turn, yeah, because I could get the haste berries. Okay, do I have enough movement to come up here, clear that tower, then clear the ziggurat and still get the haste berries on the next turn? I think I do. Yeah, yeah, I've got plenty. So, you guys auto combat this. And come back. Go here. Now, this one, do I want to auto this? This doesn't look very hard. But they could mind control. You know what? We got this. Yeah, that Eldritch Horror took a beating, but we got it. Obsidian Wyvern Egg. Another flying mount. Um, the Necro doesn't have one yet. So I think I should probably take that. The weapon I don't really care much about. But this could be pretty good. It's just going to take a while to hatch. That 375 gold was dang tempting, but yeah, we're going to send this to the Necromancer. Unless he already has a mount on the way that I've forgotten about. It's impossible for me to keep track at this point. I probably am going to sell this melee item. I think everybody's got better swords. She's got better stuff on the way. Artica doesn't, but Artica could take something from the druid, because the druid's actually got two really good things. And I'm happy with his double backstab item. That's pretty fun. So, I think this just gets sold. I don't think I'll ever use that. It's a heck of an item to just sell. Alright. Well, we go down here with these guys, get the haste berries, 
and uh, hopefully clear that, and then I'll be able to build the Master's Guild in... Uh, well, the Master's Guild's going to be done in two turns regardless, but once that Master's Guild's done, then I can get the Observatory in one after clearing all of this stuff. So these guys are in pretty good position right here to really help out the economy of this city quite a bit. Onwards to here. It's just a never-ending cascade of constructing buildings towards Grand Palaces everywhere, but by the end of this game, I'm going to have... Wait, why'd my casting points drop? Did they disjunct? Did they finally disjunct Age of Magic? No? My casting... I thought my casting points were at like 345, 355. I'm not sure why it dropped. Is Age of Magic still active? Yeah. I haven't even tried to disjunct it yet. Okay. Well, cool. I don't really know where those 25 casting points went. Something tells me somebody got invaded, but I don't see anything indicating that I lost anything. Alright, well, we got a new city here. And, uh, is this one one that I want to bother upgrading? I actually don't think I want to with this one. I think with this one, we'll just be content with... Yeah, this one I'm just going to be content with the gold income. It was basically the whole idea was to just get... Honestly, I could have gotten that with a fort just as easy, but this is fine. Oh wait, no, this was going to be a vassal. Yeah, farm, farm goblin race governance XP a bit. Um... Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. That's fine. And then you guys, I don't really have anything for you to do, I'm afraid. I think everything back here has been cleared out thoroughly. The Necromancer and Zari are all way um, off in other places. Um, I guess run west, I suppose. There's not really anything else back here for them to do. I guess the Phantasm Warrior or the Wisp could, s could go up this lava river. You know what? You two can go up the lava river. The Cheetah, obviously, you can't. Um, so you actually... I'm beginning to think you're not worth the upkeep, bud. I think you're about to get fired. There's not enough territory here left that needs exploring. Uh, he can sit in this city. And then if anything sneaks up on it, um, I could use spells to win the battle. He could protect the city that way. So he doesn't need to be fired. He can get some iron art in the nearby Tigran city. Uh, do I want to start planning to absorb these guys? Oh, wait, no. Those were the ones I released. Okay, sorry. I thought this was... I thought that city was the one that's, like, more down... I don't know, here somewhere. There's... Yeah, there's that tiger and city there. I got this one confused with this one. Uh, Tungale is fine staying as a vassal permanently, so um, I don't need them to let me know when they're ready to talk. They are on their own. Yep, you guys still got plenty of work to do, so just keep at it. Builder's Hall here, Public Baths next, and probably the hospital if I can get it, but we'll throw a Siege Workshop in in the meantime. 
And there's that other dwarf firstborn. Now I'm going to do a dwarf settler here. In the meantime, I need you guys to come back down here. Uh, we'll worry about this later. I think it's more important for me to start clearing things here and paving the way for dwarf apprentices. The city's actually been able to make them for a while. Um, I'm going to interrupt what this city is doing and just get the Sorcerer's Conflux in here. Alright, well you guys may as well all hang out together. This guy is so beat up. Uh, this is why we need uh, healers. Barracks, laboratory next, and then the temple. That's all fine. I'll throw that on, and I think I'm going to need the war hall at some point, too. Actually, let's do that. Stay well out of range of anything that might go after that bird. Wall has the siege workshop, execute his laboratory. Uh, they are already at max happiness, so I may as well leave them to it. Although I think I still want that master's guild next. Because the laboratory doesn't really do me any good, so I'll swap the places on those. Oh wait, no, I did put the laboratory in there for the express purpose of getting this faster. Although it doesn't really matter because I was going to build the Master's Guild first either way, so we'll just let it be. Okay, guys. Uh, shall we go poke Ganon and see what happens? There's actually two places I can attack on this turn. One is going after Mogwai. The other is going after Ganon, and then on the next turn I'm going to get hit the halfling. So we're we're busy all over the place here. Um, I'm going to quick save it before I do anything because I haven't done that in a while. Uh, who do we want to pick a fight with in this episode? I think we want to start pushing west. I I want this city first. Felwill is more important to me, I think. Um, I need to move in a scout. Somebody fast. I can check out what I'm dealing with here. It's more units behind it, but uh, they've split their army up in such a way that I should be able to take advantage of it. And that's barons to the edge of it. So I can outnumber them pretty severely. Right, let's bring in all of you guys. Actually, I probably should have put them here. Oh well, this will be enough. Who else can I bring? Maybe the bear. And probably that promoted ice queen. Looks pretty good. Alright, between the group of you, I think this shouldn't be too bad. I kind of wish I had moved these units onto the water. I guess I still could. Yeah, I got enough movement. Oh, oh crap, the bear is with them. Dang it. Okay, I thought those were all floaters. Whatever. Let's go for it. Hopefully they don't have anything that can take advantage of that little mistake. It doesn't look like they do. And the Ice Queen was with them too, so that knocks out two units for this battle. Crap. Um, I'm just going to attack with this group and we'll leave ourselves in a triangle stack like this. And then... Uh, wait, hang on. That might not be right. I think I want to attack with this group, and then I can pull these guys down, and then we'll just get the rest of them. Because I'll have to attack the city center on the after this. Yeah, let's do that. Attack with the main group, frontal assault, very likely victory. Um, probably could auto this, I think, and get away with it. 
kind of hard to tell for sure, but I'm gonna, I'm, uh, I don't know. Let's do this one manual, because we haven't really fought Mogwai yet, aside from sniping him once underground. So I sort of want to see what he's likely to throw at me. Phantasm Warrior has practically nothing to fear in this fight. Um, I'm going to break the walls up here, or get over them, to cause them to panic a little bit. Most of their firepower is down here. They don't have anybody that could do much about the griffin if I parked it on that uh, piece of the wall that sticks out there. So I think this is good enough for me. Spells, Mogwai? Or is he still dead? I, don't, I, I think he should be back by now. But he's not casting any spells. Alright then. Well, we can have some fun with the Ice Queens if I want to be really reckless, phase them on over the wall, and then do their AoE ice attack. Actually, I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> Didn't work, but that's okay. You got a knight here to back you up. Who just snapped that wooden gate like a twig. Uh, for you, I'm actually going to phase, but not do anything. I'm just going to leave you guarding to prevent her from doing anything. And you get to go right... Aw, oh, you can't quite make it. Okay, I could go here. Again, probably on defense. I can pressure her with multiple units. Okay, you actually could phase and then sprint and bother this guy. Eric can just knock on the door. And I think you could phase and maybe try to web that trebuchet. That would be cool. Nope, no luck. But every single one of their units is somebody in their face, so I'm just gonna end the turn. I think I can. I think the battle will end after this turn. Oh, he's using healing showers. Okay, well that's not gonna help him. Aha! You are stunned. Huh, do these longbows... Oh, these aren't longbows I made. These are ones that I got from somewhere. So they don't have the... the arrows with the electric damage. finish that off. 
Wait, are you stunned? Ah, she must have stunned me. Didn't notice that until now. to move and who needs to stay. Ice Queen can only attack one thing. I think we'll just get them with the Griffin and let you finish them off. Just kind of keep doing what we're doing here. You just stay out there. Still stunned for one turn, huh? Alright, we got longbows for that. Start blinking away at your health. Goodbye. Kinda want him to go after the trip little extra damage. And who needs XP? Well, that Ice Queen does, but she's stunned, so she's not going to get any. I'll just give it to you. Okay, Fell Will is halfway mine. Let's see if I can't finish this off. Alright, so we got, we got to drop the two units that I accidentally embarked. And then we can attack the city center with everybody else. You guys have enough movement to move, like, one space, right? Okay. I think that's how I'm yeah. gonna do this. You get attacked in the water. Now I'll attack with this group. Okay. Trying to think if they get attacked by some units that are only water units, it's extremely unlikely for that to happen, but I still think I would rather have the floating units kind of near these guys. All right, let's finish this off. I think after that last battle, I'm a little more comfortable autoing this. Mogwai just healed all the time. Oh crap, I lost uh, Sphinx. All right, well that was probably avoidable, but uh, it's not the biggest loss in the world. Okay, uh, this is now my city, which I intend to... Uh, this is another one that I kind of am tempted to keep as a frontline city, and then maybe Vassal Hasidi in the back, but Hasidi's already well on the way towards the Grand Palace, so I don't really care about Hamlet as much. But this one I kind of like the spot of. I might keep this. Yeah, I think I'll I think I'm gonna absorb this one. It's got a it's got a uh, production, good production. So it's actually got two production structures. It's also got the Forbidden Sanctum here and a magic library, which is a nice combination for Storm Sisters. And I like the location it's in too. So I think Felwill is one that actually will stay with me, probably for the rest of the game. Uh, the halflings I don't care about. They can be vassals. Um, then the next step is Ganon, who I probably can't attack anything of his yet. I'm going to move these guys here. It's kind of a sloppy setup, but this at least gives the... Uh, this at least gives the warlord something else to focus on now that I've hit him here. And I think this very well secures Hasidi unless something comes from the Dreadnought. I might want to send a small group of units back in case that happens, probably the flyers and floaters um, or swimmers. 
I think for this turn, though, I'm going to leave everybody here. Just like they are. Alright, guys. For your group... Well, for one thing, I kind of want to clear that Ziggur out along the way, because I'm betting they didn't. Yeah, it's unexplored. And that could have some nice loot in it, so... Mogwai's army is pretty beefy. They should be able to handle this. It says closely matched, though, so I better do this one myself. You never know what can happen with gluttons. Just gotta be careful. They will probably... Let's see. They don't actually... They don't have Call Lightning. They get that at gold rank. Um, well, I got my chicken, so... I'll share. Maybe that's enough to get them to come out after me. We'll see. Got my own glutton. Two giants. They should be... If there's any unit in the game that should be hard for a glutton to eat, it should be a giant. If it's based on unit size. I still wish that was a numerical stat you could look up somewhere. Hi. Of taunts. Okay, Iggy can't do much. Hmm, I could true resurrect that King Reed Serpent. That might be worth doing. I would say the Naga Matriarch, but I'm making my own now, and they're gonna be a little better, so I don't think I'm gonna worry about them. But the King Reed Serpent, I would probably take that. Seems worthy of a true resurrect. All right, well, first we have to kill it, though. I definitely want the Frost Giant kind of waiting in the flanks to deal with these guys. Now, I'm going to take AoE Poison on this next turn. The Eldritch Horror is resistant to Blight 100%, so I don't need to worry about him very much. I'm just going to fry a couple units with the Eldritch Horror. Mogwai probably can stay on defense. Iggy. Iggy can stay on defense. Good gosh, I will never be able to keep all my characters straight. Um, I think I'm going to chuck a boulder at this guy. Sixty percent chance to petrify. I don't know if elementals can be swallowed. But this guy is weak to blight. Not a lot weak to it, but he is weak enough that... Well, he would be more weak, but my rogue has counter poison. I'll just park him over here for now. We're going to let that snake do whatever it wants for the moment. It's not going to damage anybody very much. Yeah. Or maybe I'll just uh, stick this glutton here on defense and may punish him for moving. Yeah. Okay. These guys will almost certainly use their range attack, so I'm actually okay moving the giant in a bit closer for the counter attack on the next turn. That would be bad if it worked. Okay, that was extremely rude and gross. Alright, I don't necessarily want him... Oh, he can be affected by Swallow Hole. Okay. I would like to turn that snake around so that Iggy can get a backstab on it for a whole ton of damage, but I don't know if that's going to work. I, I think I'll, I'll probably just settle for this. There we go. Just enough to kill it. Alright, I need you on these guys. I need 
need to remember to not... Right, I need to remember to re res that King Serpent. I just don't know if I want to do that on this turn or the next one. Uh, you can try to eat that Naga. That'd be funny. <laughs> Got it. You move around here. Yup, yup, yup. Introduce yourself to the nice matriarch lady. And... I think it's just the stone giant and the earth elemental. Okay. Well, you're gonna regen some health. So, why don't you go back here? And you're more of a ranged fighter anyway. And you're out of range of both of them, so just throw boulders at them. They have a lot of health that we gotta chunk through. Um, I could go after the snake if I res it, but it always just. That would actually not be bad, because then I could just kill him and get the snake back. So if I cast True Resurrect... ...defend, it should be okay. I don't mind them coming to pick on the Earth Elemental a little bit, as long as he's defending. It's going in for it. Let's see, that guy is still panicked for one turn. Um, giant needs some help. Since he's decided to go YOLO and try to kill this thing. That's an enemy glutton. No, wait, this is this my glutton? I have one mixed in here somewhere. That one's mine, that one's the enemy, okay. enough of your sneaky running away crap. I need to turn him around. Now, yeah. Now this is fine. I'll just go punch him. The giant is taunted. It'll kill him on the next turn. I'm gonna use you to kill this glutton. And as long as you're panicked, I'll try to chase you down. Oh yeah, and Iggy can always heal stuff too, so there's that. Yeah, get over here and help out. Plenty of healing to be done. Well, and that wraps that up. A gold wyvern egg. Ooh, even better. I like that. Uh, Cape of Rot. Free movement and path of decay. I don't like that very much. Oh, and I, I could take all, I could take, oh, this is just the worst example of this. I can take the Cape of Rot, the Gold Wyvern Egg, and 944 gold, or I could just take 500 gold and nothing else. What do you think I'm going to do? Oh, that's hilarious. Okay, we'll take that. That's a nice big chunk of gold. And uh, who needs a Gold Wyvern? That's pretty exciting. I think my warlord possibly. He does not have a flying mount. Um, depends on what one my main leader has. She's got... Yeah, she's got kind of a crappy one. What does the gold wyvern do? I don't know what the actual mount does. But you know what? She's got a flying mount, which is good enough for now. The warlord's been off there by himself, working his hardest. I think he kind of deserves one. Although he's got the spirit protection from Blood Brothers, he may not actually need it. Um, Zari needs that one for frost reasons. Uh, 
Uh, this one will go to the leader. The Obsidian Wyvern might actually be more useful for... Well, no, it doesn't really matter. Okay, I was thinking it gave night vision, but it doesn't. Okay, um, this can go to the leader. And I think the Warlord will get her flying mount after she's done hatching the gold one. In the meantime, he's going to have to deal with it. Just trying to remember what else the gold wyvern mount gives you. Because you, I don't think you can look up items in the Tome of Wonders. So, yeah, we'll just give it to her for now and then decide what to do with it later. Um, this is a fairly expensive item that I don't need, so... All right, Iggy, uh, what was it that Impregnable was saying? Smoke screen could be handy. Yeah, I'll pick that up now. Total awareness also too, but I do agree that smoke screen is, could be very good. Um, so it gives all friendly units a bunch of defense and resistance against range attacks. It would be very helpful if I run into uh, Dreadnought stuff. So yeah, I'll go ahead and pick that up. And then, what should I replace to get you in here? Because I, I do like that snake. Although, actually, I can't get the snake in right now, so... This is the only context in which I'll say I'll like a snake. Is this game. Um... can make it that far. I think I'm just gonna be bold and go for it. So far, this kind of lightning warfare strategy has been working out pretty well. So yeah, you guys go here. Yeah, he's got some Shrines of Smiting, but it's nothing I can't handle with this group. We'll put these guys maybe off to the side, because they got that Frost Elemental with them that I'm trying to level. You guys take front and center stage. You guys come down here. And uh, on the next turn, I think we will, I think we'll be able to knock a chunk out of Ganon's empire. I really like that I got Fell Will. This is, this is a nice spot, and it kind of blocks them. One of the nice things about having Fell Will is it sort of secures this cave entrance in my territory, um, which is something that I really wanted to control, because that cave entrance leads down. That cave entrance leads down to a somewhat direct, maybe, okay, a less than direct, but a pathway to get to some of my completely unguarded vassals down here. So, well, not completely unguarded. They have their own units, but I wanted control of this area. There's also other places up here that might be good to put cities, like with uh, mines and stuff. Let me explore a little more with this guy. Hey, look who I found. Negotiate. Free peace, and let me know when you're ready to talk. Cool. Uh, I will leave them to it, and I will follow the other path. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I think uh, this is a pretty strong position that I'm in. On the next episode, we'll we'll hit Ganon uh, and take that hard thistle city away from him. Uh, we'll also be able to go after uh, Frodo on the next one, I think, and won't be able to knock him out of the game quite yet, but we can at least take his capital and get him to sweat a little bit. Um, and then we have to figure out what to do with the Dreadnought's vassals. I think after I take this, I will probably go after Millbridge because it's scaring me sitting right there with an unguarded path to this city. I don't really, I don't like that. I'll have to try to get some units back to help with that. Um, hopefully nothing comes running out of there soon but at least I can apply pressure pretty quickly with these armies. Hope you guys are enjoying those episodes. Again, that's the third of three that I'll be doing today, so I'm going to be wrapping it up here. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Also, if you haven't seen it and you think you might be interested, give my Fallout 4 series a try. It could use a few more views, a few more likes. I put a lot of work into that, and I actually am pretty proud of what I've done. We're four episodes into that right now with four more to come. 
So uh, if you think you might be interested and it might be kind of your thing, then, then I would I would suggest going and check it out. I try to make it kind of funny, so a little bit different style than what I normally do. But uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate it, and I will see you all next week. Special thanks to all my Patreon supporters, including Tier 3 supporters Blitz, Braden, Dawson Horner, Jimbro, Sarah Feingold, Spongelfan, Tarsak, and Tibby and Army. Thanks so much, everybody.